Fire is a natural process. Many ecosystems, they require fire to survive on the landscape. Fire is not this wrathful, vengeful creature that's out to, you know, destroy us. It's just when we put people and uh, infrastructure and other things in front of it, that's where we have the real problems. It has burned 100,000 acres. The at 63. 40,000 people under evacuation. Heavenly Father, please help us. That's Laura's house. Here comes the engine. Okay, <laughs> made it through it, guys. Lighter, lighter. Made it through. <laughs> That's amazing, you guys. That's amazing. <laughs> So this neighbor didn't burn. This house is all, almost rebuilt already. Uh, this house wasn't touched. Uh, another neighbor lost everything here. So when we get just up to the driveway and then it's quite clear that the house is burnt down. <laughs> it was the first time uh, I've become emotional about this. It's interesting. Um, yeah, just the fireplace standing. <laughs> so it was, um, it was sad. I'll be 70 in a few months and it's exhausting to think about. Uh, starting again because I'd spent 15 years getting things the way I wanted them and uh, had retired a few years ago. I'm sitting in the old sunroom. Dining room. <laughs> This was the last piece of property we looked at, and we had asked to see some places with land. We sat down and looked up, and there were the Topa Topa Ridge, and we said, okay, <laughs> we want it. <laughs> we're starting to joke that there is no fire season and there's all fire season. There's just one season because the fires recently have been longer in duration, um, hotter in intensity and more frequent. The weather is different than when I first started, that's for sure. When it's this hot in October, November, December, we're seeing less and less rain. Uh, the fuels, uh, the things that are out there to burn, the brush, the chaparral, the forest, it's much drier and it's more likely to burn hotter and longer. These used to be low frequency, high risk events, and now they're high frequency, high risk events. We're just operating as if it's the middle of summer all the time, and that's exhausting for everyone. Five. It looks like some sort of a bomb went off or something. That's how it looks after the fire goes through. LA County Fire Department is both an urban and a wildland department um, because we have geographical areas that encompass both. Because of urban sprawl, uh, because the population's increasing and we're not getting any more land. Now you have people that are in places that you didn't necessarily expect them to be. We first bought land in 2004. And 
we, we fell in love with it. In the case of the Thomas fire, there was 20, maybe 30 feet of flame coming towards us. I figured we had five minutes. We dropped everything and jumped in the car. Laurie's solution is to move to Manhattan. Yeah. <laughs> but California is livable. There's two ways to deal with it. You can either move the population or harden your infrastructure, which would include housing. Fire management is definitely a social issue. The next time you come to the forest, do me a favor. One has to understand the risk that you have when you move to these areas and then take mitigation actions to reduce that risk. Well, all these fires we've had the last couple of years, if you look at the fire history, they're, they're one of many fires that have gone through this exact same area. The footprint is there in previous fires, but people continue to build out there. Now the fires are just getting bigger. The monster car fire obliterating neighborhoods. Yeah, the Wolsey fire, the Thomas fire, and the devastating campfire. Politicians trying to do the right thing, they say we're going to drop these sorts of uh, requirements for you to build in this area because we want to help you get back on your feet. We can turn around building permits for people who want to rebuild their homes. We're just setting ourselves up for the next disaster. I knew that there would be fire out here eventually. All those things go through my head when I'm re thinking about rebuilding. You just start thinking, well, no, I don't want to live here anymore. But then what would I do with this land? We come out with this expectation almost from an urban area that, how are you going to deal with fire? Well, I'm going to call the fire department. In most of these very large fires, you're not going to have a fire truck show up at your place. That's the problem. There's just not enough of us to go around. Your car is running and it's on, right? So if I say go, we'll just go. Okay. These just spots coming out of nowhere is what happened in the neighborhoods. Look at all of these fire engines and all of this water. They even have a water source. We don't usually have water sources. And yet with all those resources, look what we're looking at right now. That's just another spark that dropped in from the one on the left. In the end, it's gonna come down to a realization by our leadership at all levels of government that this is a problem that may not be going away. We are going to have to up staff. We're going to have to put more money into this. We're going to have to do more work as far as the prevention side. We're going to have to do more public education, and we're going to have to make this safer. The Thomas fire lasted for, I think, 18 days. We found that the house had survived. We could see it standing here amidst the carnage. Compared to the blackened earth around it, it looked absolutely pristine. Um, of course, coming to the Chaparral, being mindful of the danger of fire, we were not going to have anything flammable in the structure of the house. So it's steel framed, it's stucco, we have the metal roof. But the real problem is keeping flying embers out of the house. Once they break the glass and are inside, you're done. So that was the first thing, to have a hard shell. So these are basically barn doors, um, metal. We believe that the, the doors were instrumental in saving the house. Probably the most important thing, though the house does sit in a gravel surround. 
So that kept anything flammable, you know, four foot or eight foot distance. Our whole strategy with this house was to create a hard shell. So all of those things can be done, but what will solve the problem are state standards as to what you need to do if you want to build in these vulnerable areas. You can see this is a good place. It's out of the city. It's, it's uh, close to Escondido, but you feel like you're in the country out here. So you can see why everybody wants to develop here. And you can see why developers want to come out here and build high density homes, because there's a big demand for people to live out here. Most of the developments that we're seeing are usually in high, high fire hazard areas. So our job is to make them more fire wise to reduce the threat of wildfire. So we put all those things into our planning effort knowing that it's gonna happen again and again. A fire safe community is a community that has all the attributes to keep fire out. It's got irrigated landscaping. It's got a 100 foot buffer around all the homes. It's got some open space areas and it's got wide access roads, hydrants. You're bound to be hit by a fire eventually. So we need to make sure these are stronger, hardened, developments make sure they comply with the fire code. Again, that's no assurance these homes aren't going to go or burn. Humans have a lot to learn. We have a lot to learn about living, living in a fire ecosystem. There has to be some kind of accommodation with the natural world in a whole new way. The firefighters, the foresters, and the city and regional planners We've got to be in the same room and taking this holistic, multidisciplinary approach. And if we have the political will, we're smart enough to get ourselves out of this. We've been neighbors for as long as we've been up here, which is about um, 14 years ago. Every night, just to watch the light change is amazing. How everything fades into the distance. Remember that house down there? <laughs> That's such a weird thing. I, <laughs> I come down the hill quite often, and I would always look at Margot's house. And uh, it ain't there anymore. It's very strange. It was right there. Right in that little, between the oaks. Yeah. 